Hey, it's time for another edition of Unlocked with Fox's Brock Heward. I'm Lance Taylor from the next round. Make sure you like and subscribe. It's always brought to you by mybookie.ag. Sign up. Football season is here. So is winning season. When you sign up, make sure you put in that promo code next round. You'll grab a welcome bonus on the house from our friends at mybookie.ag. Hello, my friend. Are we uh, friends after what yeah. happened in Seattle on Sunday? Are we are we really friends? Really? Well, I, I got to ask you a couple of things because I, I mean, for you, it's fun. Fan. I mean, for you, it's fun, Lance. I mean, for you, I, you're you're a passionate Rams fan. For me, it's my livelihood. All yeah. right. We're the flagship at the Seahawks. And when the Seahawks do well, ratings go well. And when ratings go well, bonuses go well. And this is my livelihood, Lance. Is it any fun in games? I, I, I get it. I get it. And Seattle was a surprise team last uh, year in route to going to the postseason. Uh, you wondered if Geno could back it up. It's hard to do without your starting offensive tackles, who both went down. And Charles Cross, one of the best in the game. And then Tyler Lockett gets in concussion protocol. Everything started to unravel. But, you know, I don't know how you saw the game play out. Do you think, A, and we'll get to college football here in a minute on Unlocked, do you think, A, Geno Smith is going to have a rough season? And, B, does it look like this Rams te uh, team is going to be better than advertised? Well, week one, we got to always be a little leery, right? We've got to learn lessons of week number one in the NFL every single season. I, if, if the Rams can protect Matthew Stafford, that dude is good. That dude's a Super Bowl winning elite quarterback. When he has protection around him and Sean McVay, and that's why it was a little scary, and I think we talked about that last week, that I'm not saying this is a total rebuild of the Rams. Like, not when you have Sean McVay and not when you have a Super Bowl winning quarterback. And when those two guys are in rhythm and he is protected, he that was the story of the game. I mean, Matthew Stafford, by just about any metric you want to look at, you know, from next level stats to the basic stats, was one of the three best QBs in the NFL with two right up there. Like, he was unbelievable. He didn't miss a yeah. throw. I mean, and you, got you hit. said it, zero got sacks yes. on Matt Stafford, a guy that was under duress nonstop last season en route to ultimately getting injured and not playing the rest of 2022. That was Hey, will story. you tell us yeah. the Puka Nakua story, though? Because I stilled this guy two weeks ago because I'd heard in camp rumblings that this guy was looking really good, and obviously Cooper Cup put on IR. I got him in the 16th round, our final, <laughs> and this is 13 different – uh, teams in a in a 16 round draft. I got him that late, wow. and of course I didn't start him against Seattle because I didn't know really what to expect. But I didn't realize I, I knew he was at BYU, um, probably underutilized there because he was a fifth fifth round selection from the Rams. Yeah, but you know a little bit more on the story of Puka Nakua, a name that you need to get used to. Yeah, you went Puka over Tutu. I mean, think of that combo. Puka and oh. Tutu out there in L.A. making it happen. Yeah. It, Tutu Puka, can fly, by the way. Puka was a big-time recruit out of out of the state of Utah. It was a big get for the Huskies at that time. He was a he was a four-star kid and and super, super talented and a bunch of brothers and 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 family that had played college football. And so he came to Washington. It just didn't it just didn't work. And I think there was always a yearning to get back home to family, friends, community, people you knew. So transferred back to BYU. It'd been nicked up and beat up. And that's going to be, I think, Lance, the challenge. He's even watched him in that game. It seemed like with every hit, he was like right. picking the pieces up, Humpty Dumpty, putting them back together to get and run the next play. And that's been some of the challenge for him, Lance, is just to stay healthy. We had a game last year, early in the year, if you remember, it was a great game, very hype going into it with BYU going to Oregon. And even in that game, he was, unfortunately, Puka was out, had a foot injury, toe injury, something that kind of lingered all last season. But he was the fire starter. <laughs> like, even as an injured guy, they brought him on the trip because he just loves ball. He loves to compete. He loves to play. So I think he'll put up big days, but kind of like Stafford, kind of like a bunch of those guys, they've got to stay healthy. That will be the story for the Rams this year. They showed you, man, week one, they were dangerous, a dangerous animal because a head coach that can scheme, a QB that can see it, he can elevate the pieces around him, especially when he was protected. And that was the story of week one. But keeping them healthy, keeping them all together, keeping them active on the roster, I think that'll be a lot of the theme for an up-and-down Rams season this year. Yeah, and a different animal coming to SoFi this weekend when San Francisco rolls in after dismantling Pittsburgh mm -hmm. on the road. We'll get back. We'll circle back to the NFL here on Unlocked with Fox's Brock Heward. But let's go back to college football uh, the Pac-12, they've got eight teams ranked. You and I talked about this. It's so sad the Pac-12 is going away, a conference that you actually played in. But this seems like it could be the best year in Pac-12 history. Now you've got eight teams in the top 25, only the second conference to ever do that behind the SEC. And on the other side, 
the SEC before conference play is hit, they are mm. struggling a little bit with these out-of-conference games. Yeah. Is the Pac-12 right now overall better than the SEC? One through 12 in the Pac-12, one through 16 in the SEC. De depth of lineup, it is. I mean, depth of lineup, it is. A Arizona's at the bottom of your of your order, if I'm giving a little baseball analogy, right? They're hitting like eight or nine in your lineup. They went to Mississippi State and nearly had that game. Should have right? won the game. I, I mean, it was right there for the taking on the road in Starkville. After five turnovers, by the way. Yes. Uh, Cal, we talked about that game and, and uh, the Star Wars bar out there in Berkeley that Auburn was going to visit and, and all of that. And if Cal could have done anything offensively, it was there right for the picking. So just kind of head to head and not that Auburn or top of the lineup or Mississippi state top of the lineup, but they're middle of the lineup in the sec, right? I mean, they're not ruined or built. They're not some of the lower feeders of the sec. They're kind of middle to lower. So yeah, I, I just, I, I look at, I test with that and I just, here it is. And here's the bottom line. When they played each other, what did it look like? And it sure looked like Cal could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Auburn. It sure looked like Arizona went toe-to-toe -to -toe and shoulda, coulda, woulda. And then let alone the top of the lineup with SC and Oregon and Washington. And yeah, man, it is uh, depth-wise, it's the best conference in America. Top-end talent, there's going to be more SEC dudes drafted than Pac-12 dudes in April. You know, top top end, LSU and Georgia and Alabama and walking out of the locker room, going to play in anybody, anytime, anywhere. Obviously, very, very talented. But depth-wise, quarterback position-wise, play-calling-wise, yeah, I'm going to tip my cap to, to the Pac-12 out west this season. You know, we were asked earlier today on the next round, does the SEC have a quarterback problem? And coming into the season, Jaden Daniels looked the part of a Heisman contender. Maybe he turns it around. He was really good last year. K.J. Jefferson's talented. We've seen Jackson Dart on the West Coast. And now, you know, in Oxford at Ole Miss, he's good. Will Rogers is putting up, um, mm -hmm. you know, decent numbers. He's a little bit down, not in the air raid system anymore. But overall... I said this today. I don't know if you would agree. I think there are seven quarterbacks right now in the Pac-12 that could start for any SEC team. That's a bold statement, but I've got seven deep. So you go. Uh, I go Cam Ward. I don't have Delora. Okay. I've got Cam Ward. Yep. I've got to have Shadur in there now. Okay. I've got Bo Nix. I've got a healthy Cam Rising. I've got Michael Penix Jr. I've got Caleb Williams. And I didn't go DJ. I'm trying to remember what my other one is. You didn't I go said, DJ, huh? I did not go DJ. Okay. Maybe it was six. Maybe whether it was it's six. six or whether it's six or seven, that is a testament to the strength of this conference. And as you rattle those out, each of them is built for where they are. And I think that's a big, big key. Like they fit in from yep. Get it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Penix is right there with the people that love him and believe in him and it built that thing around him. Cam is right there in Pullman and with the head coach and, and, and staff that believes in him. Bo obviously lost Dillingham, but the structure was there. They kept continuity there. Like, yep, he's there. Jaden Delore is there with Jed Fish. Caleb, obviously, with Lincoln. And Cam Rising, I think this is his 12th year in uh in Salt Lake <laughs> City. And at some point he's gonna play this season. So they all kind of have that substance. It's not a a new system, still trying to figure it out a little bit. It's not a little bit of uncertainty. And maybe, yeah, Spencer did some nice things in South Carolina, but is that sustainable? And, you know, Joe Milton is a first-time starter, you know, with Hypo really going through it for an entire season. So, yeah, stability, continuity, experience, it is all on that side of, of the teams out west with, with teams and programs right now that have gotten off to a great start in September. You know, the other one, Brock, I was going to mention was Dante Moore, the true freshman at UCLA. He just looks like one of those guys that he's just got that it factor. He's in control. Uh, and that's one of those teams that now people are starting to talk about him. We talked about him before the season started. We were talking about the five teams that were ranked. But Chip Kelly has gotten better each and every year, really in a difficult situation. And people don't understand what goes on internally in that athletics program. But they've gotten better each year. You lose DTR, everybody assumes they're going to fall. They've got a lot of experience around a really good young quarterback. Yes, they do, and I will have them in Salt Lake. Both of them should get through North Carolina Central and Weber State this weekend. So hopefully both of them do that, and they're both 3-0, and and who knows? That may be when they kind of circled the wagons out there in Utah and said, okay, Cam Rising, we're going to give you most of September, right? We're going to, we're going to get you right, and if we're going to – even though we'd love to have you last week at Baylor and probably would love to have you against Florida and, you know, like kudos to them too, by the way, playing yeah. two power five and playing at Baylor and welcoming Florida. I mean, who else does that in college football? Kyle Whittingham does. 
because he knows it's going to benefit his team. But yeah, the rubber is going to hit the road in Salt Lake a week from Saturday. We'll be there because what strikes me, Lance, about one of the great misperceptions of Chip Kelly over the years is he is just this some um, tempo spread, you know, uh, what he did at Oregon winning the day. And you mentioned DTR and some of this flash. Man, they are the substance of that program, like it was at Oregon, was physicality. A little bit like the late, great Mike Leach. Everybody thought he was just air raid and, and quirky. But Leach was always a guy that was just this quirky pirate, right? Running the air raid and throwing it all over the yard. But in actuality, if you went and watched in practice, they were physical. If you asked the demands of the offseason, it at times made headlines because he brutalized the, his guys physically. Like He demanded a bunch. Chip's the same way. And it's why I know once they get through North Carolina Central, he will be so excited for his young quarterback and for his team to match up against the most physical team west of the Rocky Mountains for the last five years. <laughs> Not always the best team, Utah. That's down at USC in some ways, although they beat them twice last year, but the most physical team. So that will be one uh, that we will get a lot of answers to. Not this weekend, but uh, the following weekend for sure. It is Unlocked with Fox's Brock Hewitt, brought to you by my bookie. Use that code next round. Secure that first depo deposit bonus. It's on our friends at mybookie.ag. So in two weeks, hopefully premier undefeated matchup. This week, not the best matchup for you guys, but I'll tell you, I'll be tuning in because DirecTV, I can't get CBS right now. So you're going to Columbus, 3 o'clock, Western Kentucky, taking on Ohio State. Um, Kyle McCord has struggled a little bit. I mean, Ryan Day came out and it's probably kind of a confidence thing. You are going to be our guy moving forward. He hasn't looked great. I mean, he's following, it's kind of like an Alabama situation where you're following great quarterbacks that go in the first round, but Austin Reed comes rolling in and in this Tyson Helton offense, 56 total touchdowns over the last couple of years. Who has the better quarterback in, in uh, Columbus this weekend? Uh, I think it's the sporty cast. I think it's still the guys uh, in scarlet and gray. But the dudes in red and white are going to fling it all over the place. And I'll tell you, Lance, watching the team these first two weeks, the number of times I'm doing just this, like just chuckling like, dude, <laughs> you are a poor man's Brett Favre, right? Like, There is no question this kid grew up in St. Augustine, Florida, uh, he didn't watch Brett Favre because he was dumb, but he watched Mahomes and the rest of them who all watch Brett Favre and like, you know what? I'm going to run and gun and I'm going to just chuck it all over the yard. I don't think I've seen a team and it's some of their system. It's, it's some of what Tyson Helton loves to do and push the ball vertically. But this guy, there's no receiver that comes back to the huddle. It's like, hey, bro, give me a chance. Because that's what most receivers do, Lance, over my lifetime. And I, I could read the body language. The receivers get in the huddle. Like, Come on, man. Just give me a chance. Instead, I think it's the other way. I think some of these receivers are like, okay, Austin, I get it. I get it. You're going to throw it to me, and you're, you're going to just throw it up and give me opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. So he's going to run. He's going to get hit. I think you're going to see those DNs for Ohio State that right now are sitting on zero sacks, JT and Sawyer. I think they add to their sack total this weekend, but it's going to be fun. And on the other side, you're going to see uh, a demo that, that or some tape I put together. We're watching C.J. Stroud, as you said, the standard versus watching Kyle McCord. And there's actually a lot of similarities from a size standpoint, from a fundamental standpoint, from an underneath getting the ball out standpoint, but it's that next level. And it's the ability to throw the intermediate game and ultimately the deep shots when you've got a Becca, a Mecca, um, a Buka, and you've got Marvin Harrison Jr., you got to push the ball. Like, come on now. we got to push this ball down the field. So, yeah, all eyes will be on him as they get ready for Notre Dame the following weekend. And protection up front, not as good as certainly C.J. Stroud had over his years, but those receivers on the perimeter, let's see them push the ball down the field. I'll be watching that Saturday for sure. You know, I, I, I try to remind people two years ago, C.J. Stroud really struggled against Oregon. I don't think you were on that game. I think it was Gus and Clack. It was Gus, yep. Yeah, but C.J. Stroud seemed to overthrow everything. Now, the run defense was horrendous against Oregon that day, but they got yep. upset. And, you know, this is an opportunity. I mean, Kyle McCord's playing at Ohio State for a reason. There's a reason Ryan Day brought him in. It's an incredible system. So I will be interested to see if they can get that kind of uh, smoothed out because Drew Aller right now is looking good at Penn State. Mm -hmm. um, J.J. McCarthy, to me, awesome. is the best option that Jim Harbaugh's had at quarterback since he's been at Michigan. So they got to get Kyle McCord figured out 
or they've got some issues. They do. And if you really do dig into the tape, yes, there's been some bumps. He played much better week two than he did in the opener. Opener missed four or five throws that, come on, you got you to hit it. And that's why it was still a QB competition until week two. Didn't really miss a throw in week two, whereas the backup did. Devin missed a four or five. And that's why Ryan said this week, nope, okay, you're the guy. You're settled in. The other young guy still gets a little anxious, still a little bit more inaccurate. So we're going to dial into you. But what you really got to watch and if you're, you know, uh, an SEC fan thinking the Buckeyes are a playoff contender and sitting at number six, they are. Or if you're a Michigan fan, what you're going to watch is the group up front. Left tackles, a San Diego State transfer. Right tackles, a third-year player that from a just a pure athleticism standpoint, very different than the upper crust tier guys they've had that are all in the NFL. Two guards are good. Center's making his third start, a young player that's just trying to find his way. So that's where the game is. When you play Penn State and there's those dudes – and you play Michigan and those dudes, and you play in Alabama and Georgia and LSU and those dudes, you've got to block them. And um, once again, other than some of the throws down the field, keep your eye on that line of scrimmage as well. This is a matchup they should dominate. This is a matchup against a defense, and, and Coach Summers over there is creative and largely plays two defensive linemen, got run on for 330 yards by South Florida. This is a game that up front should be a statement for them as they get ready for their trip to South Bend. This is Unlocked with Fox's Brock here. We do it every week here on Disrupt the Media. Make sure you like, you subscribe. It's brought to you by Lance'sLock.com. Jump on board. Again, season just getting rolling. Uh, week two of the NFL, we're ready for it. Lance'sLock.com. You get a free play every single day. You can buy daily packages, weekly, monthly, annual packages at Lance'sLock.com. Let's shift to the NFL, back to the NFL. Monday night. Aaron Rodgers runs out of the tunnel. He's got the American flag. Everybody's excited. And then the absolute worst thing. And if you're not only a Jets fan, I said this on Monday or Tuesday, if you're just a sports fan, if you're just a, 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 a good human being, you feel bad. Whether, whatever your take was on Aaron Rodgers, mm -hmm. you feel bad for the guy. You feel bad for the organization. And now people are like, should they go out and get another guy? And I think I'm in the minority. I'm like, stay with Zach Wilson. Let's see what happens with this kid. He wasn't good last year, but you got a healthy Brees Hall right now. You got year two Garrett Wilson. You've yeah. got some veterans in Alan Lazard and, and Randall Cobb coming over. And you've also still got Aaron Rodgers there, which to me, Zach has gotten better just in the last couple of months being around that guy. What are your thoughts on the Jets? What should they do? And will they still – with whatever their quarterback situation is, be relevant in the AFC. Yeah, they still turned over my MVP, right? Last week, we made some bold <laughs> predictions, and I'm like, oh, really? Like, I'm going to do Unlocked, and I'm going to hear, like, oh, yeah, Josh Allen, man, here's three picks and a fumble. Way hey, to go. you know what's crazy, Brock? Before you uh, get to your point, like, because of the injury, nobody really is talking about Josh Allen, a guy that was really a turnover machine last year, yep. and in week one against a really good defense to turn it over four times. I mean, without those turnovers, they win that game. Uh, yeah. And nobody's talking about that because of the injury. But you got to go get those turnovers. You got to go make those catches. You got to go create those fumbles, and they do that, and that defense is nasty. To your first question, you do not bring in another guy now. Absolutely not. You don't go trade for somebody. You don't bring Carson Wentz. You don't need that theater. What you need right now is to elevate your practice squad guy, um, who's got some background in the system with Aaron and everything else, and you really empower Zach. And you saw the guys do it. You saw Lazar do it. You saw Garrett do it. You saw defensive players do it, right? You saw them in a way next to him over the course of the game that you never saw last year, right? You, you never saw the players react to Zach in that way. So you can see they want him to do well. Kind of reminds me of a point that uh, Steve Sarkeesian said to us about Quinn Ewers. And you've seen this, and you saw it in Alabama the other night that he purposely brought his QB coach down to the sidelines because he felt too many times that Quinn was an independent contractor in 22. He wanted him around his teammates. He wanted the quarterback coach around him. He wanted he wanted that just kind of life on the sidelines. And I felt life around Zach Wilson in ways that I had never felt over the previous couple years. So no, you don't bring anybody in right now to disrupt it. You give him every opportunity to run it. You run two elite backs. You play pass. You play great defense. And with winning, you know what's going to happen to that kid? He's going to gain some confidence, right? So right now they're all giving him love and, and they want and, and, and hope. But if he wins, and I think with the, all the pieces around him, they can still win. You're going to see maybe a confidence in Zach you've never seen before in the Big Apple. Well, you know, I think the first time I really watched Zach was three years ago when SC went up to Provo. And it was a Saturday, 2.30 atmosphere. 
uh, a 2.30 central kick, I should say, and Keaton Slovis had just gotten rolling for the Trojans. Yep. And BYU, and you know they were calling him the, the Mormon Manziel. And I don't know if Zach really liked that label, but it fit. I mean, the kid was running all over the place, making great plays with his legs, got a yep. lot of zip on the ball, which we saw on Monday night, made a couple of bad reads, but when he made some of those completions, yep. he had a little zip. People are dogging me out, Brock, in our chat room. They're like, you don't know what you're talking about. Zach is awful. And I'm like, I agree. Last year, Zach was awful, but we've seen quarterbacks make a transition in the NFL. Geno Smith was one of those guys who led the NFL in completion percentage of last year. He was a terrible Jet. You know what will be fascinating to see in this saga that we, as you said, was just ripped away from us on the field with Aaron and and all that was going to come with it, right? The way he'd handle the New York press, the way he'd handle all the attention, the way he'd handle adversity whenevably it's going to come and it will come to Zach as it would have with Aaron Rodgers because up front, they're still very, very average on their offensive line and they've got to block some very difficult people in their division and then the AFC at large. But here's going to be uh, my intrigue factor. Is Aaron Rodgers around? How much is Aaron Rodgers around? It's not his job to make Zach Wilson great, right? We've 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 seen those different storylines over the years. We've heard Joe Flacco talk about it. That's not my job to make the backup great. In Hard Knocks, though, you saw the very active role that he took in his development. You've seen it quoted publicly. How much will Aaron Rodgers be around this season? Or does he, you know, just too much? I'm going to go get fixed. I'm going to go you know, do everything away and I'll fly in and I'll fly out. I'll still, you know, because I love Nathaniel Hackett or is that love for Nathaniel Hackett and all the heat that he's taken and now the difficult spot he's in, does Aaron go, you know what? I'm going to have Nathaniel's back and I'm going to have Salah's back and I'm going to have Zach's back and I'm going to make sure that the Jets, J-E-T-S, can rebound from this. How much he's present and how much he's around will be an absolute storyline to watch moving forward. Well, I would have said two years ago, there's no chance Aaron Rodgers is around. But again, the the 180 PR he's been able to do, I mean, he looks like a totally different person, much like Quinn Ewers, who you were talking about at Texas. So I assume based on what he has already done to rehab the image, he'll continue to push and he'll be a cheerleader until, you know, maybe they're they're two and nine and they're completely out of this sure. thing. Sure. Because they got yeah. a difficult start to the schedule. Yeah. And I don't think a cheerleader, and, and not to parse words here, I don't think a cheerleader, but an actual like in that meeting room. And actually with Zach. And hey, here's all that we installed. And I thought, you know, Troy and Joe and Peyton and Eli did a a terrific job of of getting to the nuance in the system, of actually getting to where Aaron, you know, is at. It reminds me, I don't know if I've told you this story before, either on the show or or the first couple of weeks. So if I have, just say, hey, uh, delete that. Let's start that one over. You've already told me that. But when Matt Hasselbeck came to the Seattle Seahawks, Mike Holmgren was the head coach. They had been together in Green Bay. Brett Favre was the starter. And, you know, Matt you know, was traded for, got his contract and Hey, let's, let's start at chapter 10. Let's go. Yeah, I can make this call. Let's make the Tom call. Let's do the, you know, all this little nuanced stuff that's not in chapter one and man, he and Holmgren butted heads so much. And Mike's like, Matt, that's not what I need for this team. You're not Brett Favre, you know? And even though in your mind, you, 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 you know, you understand it, these guys don't. So go back to chapter run one and do it this way. And Boston college, Matt, and it was like, <sighs> I don't want to do it that way. Like, you know, hard headed, you know, rightfully so competitive, knowing that, hey, I can do more. I can do more. And Mike say, nope, I need you to do this. So that's again with with Zach Wilson watching Aaron Rodgers doing all this stuff. It's like, wow, how's he able to do all that? Me watching Peyton Manning go, wow, how is he able to do all of that? How much he can kind of grow on that and everything that they installed and everything they did in training camp and everything that Aaron was going to do with Randall and Lazard and Garrett. How much of that and how quickly can Nathaniel hack it? And as I said, if Aaron Rodgers right next to him, how quickly they can do that, man. Yes, the big storyline's gone. Okay, the headline of Aaron Rodgers is gone. But I'll tell you, there's a lot of juicy chapters still to be written over the next 16 weeks. It's Unlocked with Fox's Brock here. We talk college football. We talk the NFL. Like, subscribe. It's brought to you by MyBookie. Use that code next round. Secure a first deposit bonus on the house, mybookie.ag. Okay, before we get you out of here, Let's do a whip around week one. I mean, the Giants playoff team winning on the road in Minnesota in the postseason last year, they get completely shelled 40 to nothing at home. Complete embarrassment. 26 nothing, Brock. I turned it off and I started the new show that I'd never seen because that game was was way over. Um, I did back San Francisco going on the road to Hines. Everybody was talking about 
how good Kenny Pickett and this offense looked in the preseason, that was an ass whipping as well. Um, what do we know coming out of week one? We know the dominant defensive lines still play more than anything else in this league. I think that's what we know. I think San Francisco can take their game on the road anytime, anywhere against anybody and be a sizable threat. And by the way, Brock Purdy, surgically repaired elbow, looked just fine with all yeah. the weaponry that he had. Dallas's crew and their front seven with Dan Quinn and the continuity they have, yeah, they're monsters, man. And, and that front just absolutely embarrassed. And while the Rams do not have Leonard Floyd and, and don't have some of the pieces that Aaron Donald had in the heyday in their Super Bowl years, Aaron Donald is still unblockable. Um, when he needs to be and can be, and, and when they stunt him and move him around, he's still an absolute force of nature. So, did this you ever league, have an oh my god moment though? Because we saw that Gino <laughs> was mic'd up, and you see ninety nine coming through, and I said basically the dude's a grizzly in pads, but he goes oh my god. So, what was the worst situation that you can remember with maybe a name player? Yeah, when when they were they had that straight shot at you. Oh, it was dear God, I just got killed. So Gino <laughs> got rid of the ball. I did not. So we were playing in one of my rare starts in the NFL. We were playing the Broncos, uh, Mike Shanahan, head coach, Bill Romanowski, linebacker, mm. um, John Mobley. Yeah, it wasn't gold. It was Mobley, the other linebacker that was like a 4'4", 215-pound present-day linebacker, just absolutely lightning fast. And we run empty all go. And we put it in that week, and Holmgren's like very clearly to me, listen, we're going to go all go. It's what you do best. I throw the deep ball. But if they bring somebody, you've got to make a play, and you got to get rid of the ball. I'm like, all right, yeah, yeah, uh, it's good. So we had like the, I don't know, our own 10-yard line, 12-yard line, empty, I'll go. I can't wait. And I'm looking at I'm trying to play cool. It's like my second start, third year in the NFL, second year. Who and were I'm your seeing, big receivers then? Oh, buddy, it was a rebuilding year. It was not. Okay. You know, was <laughs> Sean, uh, Derek May, great guy, just awesome teammate. Uh, Sean Dawkins, after he bounced around a few places, it was a rebuild year. Okay, okay. And, uh, and no side on them, this was my fault. And I'm trying to look at, you know, Bill Romanowski's bluff and blitz. And I'm like, okay, he's coming, right? So he's coming. So I'm not going to acknowledge him because if I do, then maybe we turn protection. I know I got to get rid of the ball. So take the snap. I go to throw a little hot Romanowski drops off. And before I can do anything, I hear the whole crowd go. <gasps> and John Mobley comes from the blind side on probably a 15 yard head start from the other direction and lifts me 15 feet in the air. I mean, absolutely. Like from the eight yard line, I think I landed the three. I, I, uh, it was not an, Oh my God. It was upon impact. It was truly dear God. May I still live. <laughs> May, may Can I still, we still find that on YouTube? May I still wake up? I don't know. That was a nine. That was in two thousand. Probably not. Mm, yeah. So anywho, that happens. My life flashes before my eyes. I can't breathe. The wind is totally knocked out of me. I'm. I call a timeout from the ground because I'm like. <gasps> and then I realize, oh dear God, again, I got to go to the sidelines where Mike Holmgren <laughs> is foaming mad, bright red, no grace, killing me. I told you. <laughs> so we run two more plays, Lance. We try to run a sprint pass on the third down, and I can't run. And I come to the sideline, and something is wrong with me. I go up the tunnel, and I pee blood. So he dislodged oh, like God. my kidney, bruised my kidney. I go in an ambulance to the hospital in pads, like, oh, Lord, please save me and let me live. So, yeah. get the So whole you really thought it was that bad, that dire? I didn't think I was going to die, but it was bad. It was the worst. I, I never want to piss taken. blood. I mean, that's one of I those things. Blood, the catheter, that was another dear God moment. Like I'm laying there, <laughs> taking my shoulder pads off, pants go down. What is that? Oh, dear God, that goes in. I, I mean, stayed the night in the hospital. It was it was pretty bad, bro. Hey, who's who's the uh, better? And for, for this purpose, we'll say Jalen Hurts, Alabama quarterback. But when healthy, who would you rather have, Tua or Jalen Hurts? You build your team totally different, and that's the beauty of it. That's like an impossible question. It's all built. And that's why, like, this whole game manager gets such a bad rap. How do I manage my team and my offense with that skill set? Jalen Hurts with Tua would not be as good. Tua in Jalen Hurts' system not be as good. Build the team around them and play to their absolute strengths and play to Jalen Hurts' 240-pound power lifting 
physical game, great. Play to Tua and get in the spread and let him wing it all over the field, great. So managing, thats a, and I'm not dodging the question, but I'm making the point, the game manager is not bad if you manage your quarterback and your system all around their strengths. And, yeah, I, I would probably say if, I, if you put me in the corner and said, stop being a clown, answer the freaking question, okay? <laughs> On, uh, on Unlocked, we answer questions. We don't dodge. That's Take it. That's hit. it, Brock. Take the hit from Mobley. Get up and suck it up like Holmgren yelled at me. Uh, I would probably say Hurts just because of the durability. And but if Tua a, stays healthy, man, Miami is going F, to man. be it dangerous. Is, it, is. it is a big F. I've got to – and I hate to do this. I hate to bet on injuries, but I bet Dunaway a couple of years ago that there's no way he'll ever stay healthy for a full 17. I hope I'm wrong because yep. he'll put up some massive numbers, man. And, and with what he's got with Tyreek and, and Jalen Waddell, fun. man, that's a dangerous offense. Fun, fun, fun. fun. Yeah, I'm going to bet on Hurts. He did it. He played 20 games. He took a team to a Super Bowl. I'm going to bet on that sustainability and durability, which is, as we know, and I could not do, both concussion and bruised kidney, which you heard today, and pissing blood. My greatest ability was not being available, and uh, that was, yeah. Okay, so week two, better chance of happening. The Jets go on the road and play a Cowboys team that was lights out defensively last year. People forget about that because Dak was so bad at turning the football over. So with Zach Wilson, they go on the road and win that game or the Rams at home against that that San Francisco roster, which you oh, can make an argument is yeah. the best in football. The better chance is the Jets because of their defense. The better chance is, is those guys. I, I The Rams were amazing, but Stafford's going to get hit. His feet are going to move. And then their defense, which the Seahawks could never get to in the second half because they were hardly on the field with the Rams on it forever. You saw in that first half, Seattle went largely up and down the field. So, yeah, that Jets defense is going to give Zach. And that Jets defense with Brees, see, that's the key too, right? When when they lost Brees Hall last year, you can't play complementary football. But when you got an elite back and then an elite sidekick and that defense – you can go on the road and be a threat and a danger to anybody anytime this season. Okay, wait, one final one then. Better chance of bouncing back because I made the mistake of, of backing the Broncos this week, and it looked like the same old offense we saw last year. Better chance of, of bouncing back, having a better year, Bryce Young in Carolina or Russell Wilson in Denver? Mm. <sighs> Neither? Yeah, that's good. Bryce did not look good. No, Bryce is not going to have a lot of help up front. So uh, Russell's, they invested gazillions of dollars in their offensive line, right? In, in McGlinchey and the top powers. And and so, and, and Sean Payton is accomplished and knows what he wants to do. And, you know, Russell was top five rating. I know they only had six possessions. Their defense didn't help them either. Uh, I'm going to say Russell on that one. I'd, I'd bounce back with him. These rookies, and you saw it with Trevor Lawrence, and you've seen it with most of them, it is going to be a school of hard knocks, and you're just going to have to go through it, and you're going to have to wear it like a pitcher on a, on a bad night with no bullpen, buddy. Sorry, you're going to have to wear it. Bryce is going to wear it a little bit more than I think a Russell will this year. This is where you get the hard questions, the difficult answers, even with John Mobley breathing down your neck. Hey, uh, he, he played in the SEC, right? Why, am I, why is this escaping me? Was it Kentucky? I choose Was it to. Bama? I, I I choose to flush that like the like the bloody toilet. Okay. I choose okay. to flush that. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna I'm going to YouTube right now. 2000, uh, Seattle and Denver. I Can't don't think you're gonna it. find it, but if you do, yeah, we can revisit this next week. Okay. It's gonna well, be. You're right. This week, college football is a little barren, and then it's over. And we didn't even get to Dion, by the way. We got to continue to to do that because he continues to be the biggest uh, story in all yeah. of college football. I and, doubted him. I played Nebraska plus two and a half. That was. That was that was over quickly. Uh, look, safe travels to Columbus. Enjoy okay, it. We'll be watching Austin Reed against Kyle McCord. We'll see who the better quarterback is. Thank you, Lance. Always a blast, man. These this time just flies by, and that means we're having a whole bunch of fun, and we'll keep doing it all season long. See you, buddy. Like and subscribe. It's unlocked with Fox's Brock Hewer. Brought to you by Lance'sLock.com. Free play every day. Jump on board. Lance'sLock.com.